In the last video, we looked at a basic introduction to probability. In this video, we're going to look at listing outcomes and sample spaces. Let's start off now with the number eight. I might be asked to write down the factors of eight. So all of the numbers that go into eight. Well, eight goes into it, uh, four will go into it, one is gonna go into it, and two will. I've not done this in a systematic way. I've just looked and said, well, it's going to be eight, four, one, and two. If I took a systematic approach, I could ask myself, one multiplied by what gives me eight? And the answer is eight. Can I multiply two by anything? Well, the answer is four. Can I multiply three by anything? The answer is no. And then, of course, if I say, can I multiply anything by four? The answer is two. So I can write this now as one, two, four, and eight. So this is a more systematic approach. Listing outcomes and sample spaces allow us now a systematic way of listing all of the possible outcomes of an experiment that we do. That's gonna make our life slightly easier when we're calculating probabilities. So when we're looking at particular events and the probability of that event happening. So let's have a look at this question here. It says on a school menu, there are main courses and puddings. The choices for main courses are pizza, chips, burgers and rice. The choices for puddings are ice cream, yogurt and fruit. John has one main course and one pudding each day. In the first part, we'll ask to list all of the possible outcomes. And in the second part, we're asked to find the probability that on any given day, John has rice to eat. We'll assume that these are all equally likely. So we can see now that we've got four just here. So let's now look at a systematic way of listing all of the possible outcomes. So it's gonna have one main course and one pudding. Instead of writing pizza every time, I'm simply going to write P for pizza, C for chips, B for burgers, R for rice, I for ice cream, Y for yogurt, and F for fruit. So if we look at them, we could have pizza and ice cream, we could have pizza and yogurt, or we could have pizza and fruit. I can do exactly the same with the chips. Chips and ice cream, chips and yogurt, and chips and fruit. I could have burger and ice cream, I could have burger and yogurt, or I could have burger and fruit. We would have now rice and ice cream, we'd have rice and yogurt, and we'd have now rice and fruit. So these are all of the possible outcomes of this particular experiment. So if we look at the second part of the question, it says find the probability that on any given day, John has rice to eat. So this is an event. So the probability now of rice, this is what we call an event. We can see quite clearly now that we have three of those out of 12, or you could just say that it's gonna be one of four. So one out of four or 0 0.25. Remember, in the last video, we looked at writing probabilities either as fractions or decimals. If I said, what's the probability now that on here that John has uh, chips and yogurt, we can see that there is one of those out of 12. All of these are said to be equally likely. So we could say the probability is one out of 12. So this now is listing all of the outcomes. It just gives us the combinations. And this now is a systematic way of doing it rather than just jumping about. Okay, next question. In part A, it says two fair six-sided die are rolled. Their scores are added together and recorded. Draw a sample space to show all of the possible outcomes. So what we're going to do is just sketch this up. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we're going to have now is for fine. We're going to be adding these. So what I'm going to do is put just for add here. So let's do that. And what we're going to have is, and this will be dice one, and then we'll have dice number two. So dice number two. So on the first one, we could have now one, two, three, four, five, and six. On two, we would have one, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm just gonna put some lines on to make my life slightly easier. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll just put these on 
just so I get them in the correct box. So if you've got uh, a square, uh, square paper in your book, it might be slightly nicer. Uh, that's going to look something like that. And then all we're going to do is add these together. So if we look at that, and we can go from there, so let's do that, and let's do that, and we can just put these in each of the boxes. So if we do this systematically, working along this top row, so we're going to have one and one, which is going to give us two, two and one, which is going to give us three, three and one, which is going to give us four, four and one, which is going to give us five, we'll have six and we'll have seven. If we now work along this one, we're going to have one and two, so it'll be three, two and two, four, we've got three and two, five, and we can see this is just increasing by one each time. This one is going to be four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. If we take the next one, we've got five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. The next one, we're going to have six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then we're going to have eleven. And finally, we're going to have seven, we're going to have eight, we're going to have nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So this now gives us a sample space. These are all of the possible outcomes. So we might look at one of these and say now uh, that one particular outcome is scoring three in total. So let's write down an event. We we're asked to write down one possible event. And what we could say is that with the two die combined, we now roll, let's say we roll a score, so roll a score of six. So this is an event, and we could look at the probability of that event happening. So let's do that one. Let's look at the probability now of a combined score of six. What I can do is go through the sample space and check how many we've got. So these are equally likely as it's now a fair six-sided dice. Well, both of these are, so they're equally likely. So if we look at all of the sixes, there is going to be one here, there's one here, there's one here, there's one here, and there's one here. So if I look at that, I've got five out of a possible 36. So what I can say then now is the probability, and we'll write it down, let's go for that. We can say the probability of now a score of six is going to be five out of 36. All of these scores are equally likely. So to find the probability, we have the number of favorable outcomes divided by the number of total outcomes. So we can see a six by six grid is going to give us 36. Perhaps what I should do just to make this easier to see, because um, I can understand that you may think, well, are these, let's just change that, are these included? Let's uh, change that over uh, and we'll have this one. So these numbers are not included in our sample space. What we're looking at now are the outcomes. So these are the numbers that we have and our outcomes are the white and yellow ones. So the green ones are the scores on the die. Okay, so if we now looked at another one, if I said now the probability of getting a combined score of two, well, how many twos have we got? There's one two, so that's going to be one out of 36. As you can see, certain combinations or certain scores have a much more likely chance of coming up. So we can see with six, if we look at seven, with seven, we've got six sevens. So the probability of rolling a combined score of seven is going to be six over 36, which we could, if we wanted, simplify to one six. We don't always have to simplify, but that gives us what we have. Okay, so let's look at C. Find the probability of scoring a total of seven. Well, we've just done that one. Okay, let's look at the probability of not getting a seven. What we could do is go ahead and work out all of those that aren't seven, or alternatively, we could do one minus the probability of a seven, and that's what we looked at in the last video. The probability of something not happening is one minus the probability of it happening. So one minus now one six is going to give me five over six. So that's using a sample space. So from here, all we've done is listed all of the possible outcomes. So the outcomes are the things that can happen from the trial, and we've looked at an event. The event is rolling a total 
of six. Okay, Fred has a fair spinner with four equal sections as shown below and a fair coin. So these are equally likely outcomes. So equally likely to get a red, a yellow, a green or blue, equally likely to get a head or tail. He flips both a coin and spins the spinner once and records his results. We're asked to list all of the possible outcomes of his experiment and find the probability he gets yellow and tails. So let's go ahead. What we can have is the following. We can have red and we could have head. We could have red and we could have a tail. We could have yellow and head. We could have yellow and tail. We could have green and head. We could have green and tail. And we could have blue and head or blue and tail. So these are all of the possible combinations and that gives us the possible outcomes of this experiment. So if we look at now the probability of yellow and tails, that is what we're interested in. We can see now that there is one possible yellow and tail out of a total of eight. So we would say it's one out of eight. If we were asked now the probability of a tail, we can quite clearly see that that's going to be one half. The probability of a yellow appearing is going to be one quarter. So this is a systematic way of listing all of the possible outcomes to this particular experiment. If we looked at some particular events, the event might be uh, spinning a red and flipping a head. So all we would do is go ahead and work them out. As you can see though, once we put it in this form, it's easier to work with. So there we go, that's some basic work with listed outcomes and sample spaces.